Hey gang, Jane back today with a fun crochet project using a simple granny square. This adorable pillow has been a favorite since I shared the Happy Petal Granny Square tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own version. The original Happy Petal Square has eight rounds, but this fun little piece uses a smaller version that only has the first four rounds. This makes it a quick and easy project that leaves plenty of room for colorful creativity. These first four rounds of the Happy Petal work out to a four inch square. I'm going to make a 16 inch throw pillow, so I'll be using 16 of these squares for one side of my pillow. You can either make two identical sides for your pillow or like I did, you can switch it up with a different granny square design on the back because then I can just flip the pillow to instantly change up the vibe of my space. You can just make two of the pillow tops I'm going to show you today, join them together and you'll be good to go. Hey, if you haven't already, be sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you're enjoying these tutorials, give them a thumbs up and share them with your friends. Your support helps me keep the free content coming and encourages others to join in on the creativity. As with all my squares, you can find the free patterns over on my blog at www.jspcreate.com, along with inspirational pics, detailed close-ups, and color variations. I've used 100% acrylic Easy Care yarn for this project. As well, I have a 16 inch square pillow form that is also washable. This makes washing the entire pillow easier because I sew my pillow forms right in to the covers. So these squares were made using a five millimeter crochet hook, but I will be going up a half size of hook to a 5.5 millimeter to make sure my seams are not too tight. In addition to your squares and your crochet hook, you'll also need a pair of scissors, a darning needle, and one of your colors to use for the seams. I'm using the same color as my flowers. You can find the directions for the happy petal square over on my blog, and there's also a full video tutorial for it. So I'll leave the link in the description for you to follow for making your squares. But this tutorial will be focusing on assembling the pillow. All right, let's jump into our Happy Petal Pillow tutorial. I'll be joining these squares today by crocheting them together from the wrong side. So the wrong side will be facing me and right sides will be facing together. I've done up two samples to show you and these are the wrong sides of the cover. I'll be using a slip stitch, but you could also use a single crochet stitch. Both will work. They just give a little bit of a different look. When it comes to cushion covers or bags, it doesn't matter to me what the inside looks like as much because I'll either have a lining or it's just not gonna show. When I'm doing blankets, however, I do like them to be reversible and the back is gonna show. So I tend not to use this method for blankets. This is the slip stitch method and you can see there's a ridge of texture to it, but it joins them nice and secure. It's easy to work and the right side looks like this, all even, but it still has enough to give it that really nice handmade flair. This is done with the single crochet, and you can see it has more ridge here than the slip stitch does. So it still joins it nicely, it's secure, but you've got more of a ridge. If this is for a bag and you're lining it, or again, we're making a pillow, it's gonna be on the inside, you're not gonna see it. And this side looks pretty much like this. Little bit of a difference right here at the center where these four squares join. It's a little looser here because the stitch itself sits away from the fabric. Here it's pulled in a little more. So the slip stitch is my preferred method, but either one will work. Now that you know what they look like on the wrong side and on the right side, you can choose your method and I'm gonna show you how to do the slip stitch method. To begin with, I'll lay out my 16 squares in four rows of four squares each. I'll be joining them by first working the horizontal seams and then I'll work the vertical seams. I find it best to have these laid out in front of me on a flat surface so I can visualize what square is coming next and they all stay neat and tidy because it's really easy for these squares to get out of order. Once you have everybody lined up the way that you want to join them, I start in this bottom corner with the bottom two rows, like those rows that are closest to me. And you're going to take the second row and flip it onto the first row. So right sides are together, wrong sides are facing out. And we're going to work along the top here. So one at a time, we're going to join them into a strip. So I want to put a slip knot on my hook to start with. So I do this by wrapping the yarn around my finger, crossing it in front and holding that with my thumb and flipping it down so it looks like a pretzel. And then I take my hook and go under that strand and pull the two ends together and up to the hook. Any way you can get a slip knot onto your hook, that's what you're looking for. So take your 
first pair and you're working along the top here and you're only going to be working into the chain spaces. So it's easier to see on this close up that's already done. You will not be working into any stitches, only the chain spaces of each of the squares. And we're going to do the slip stitch method. So you're looking for the first chain space after the corner double crochet. That's where you want to start in each of the squares that have to correspond. So wrap your yarn around and pull through and through the one on the hook. So there's your first slip stitch. Then I chain one because each of these chain spaces are divided by a stitch. It evens it out. If I didn't chain one, it would pull it in and kind of pucker my work. So I do a chain one in between each slip stitch into the next chain space on each of the pieces so they correspond. Yarn over, pull through both and through the loop on the hook and chain one. Continue to work in each of the chain spaces that correspond with each other, working through both pieces and then a chain one. Slip stitching and then chain one. And make sure that you're in the chain spaces and not the stitches. Being consistent like that is going to give you a nice consistent look on the front of the work. Remembering those chain ones in between. And then chain one and we're back to the next corner. You want the chain space before the double crochet, slip stitch, and chain one. There is our first slip stitch set. Done. If we look on the right side, there it is nice and even. We're going to continue to join the squares across. So pick up your next set, and again, they're right sides together. Starting again in that chain space just to the left of the double crochet, and holding this one still on the hook, you want to pull this up so that there's no gap between the squares. Insert into the chain space. So there's a little bit of, uh, there's a lot going on here as far as you're holding, but it just, it's okay, it works. We're on the wrong side, so. Pull the yarn through and through the loop on the hook and chain one and we're off and running again. Exactly what we just did. So let's work across this one. Slip stitching and chain one into each of the spaces, making sure you're working through both of the squares and trying to keep it loose. If you're finding that it's too hard to keep it as loose as you think it should be, then go up another hook size. That really helps you get looser and stay consistent. So here we are at the corner just before the double crochet and we want to slip stitch and chain one. Now we have two of them joined together. So let's continue and do the next two batches and then we'll take a look at what we've done. Into the chain space to the left of the double crochet, slip stitch, and pull it through. Don't leave too much of a gap here. Make sure this chain space here isn't too large or you'll end up with a big hole in your center of your squares. Try to keep everything as consistent as possible. And then the front side will look consistent. It's not gonna be perfect, you know, that's handmade for you. And that's kind of the beauty of it. But within reason, try to keep it consistent. This can feel a little awkward at first because you're trying to hold these two pieces together. You have all these pieces hanging off the back here. So now we have three of them put together. It's like this long chain of squares. And I have one more batch to put on and then we'll take a look at what they look like on the right side. Remember, you're always going into these chain spaces. This one might be easier to do at a table because you're 
you have a lot going on back here and it's nice for it to have somewhere to sit. If you're doing it on your lap, uh, sometimes it kind of falls off. There's not enough space. But just make sure you have somewhere for them to, to sit out of your way while they're still attached to the piece you're working on. Okay, we're in our last corner. We end with a slip stitch and then we just bring the yarn through. We're going to cut it because we're done with this row. Cut it about three to four inches because you will darn that in at the end. And then lay them back out. Let's unfold them and just take a look. So that's nice. That's pretty consistent. It doesn't pucker it in. The, the chain stitches in between helped with that. You have one row joined. So we're going to continue to join. You bring in your next row and you're going to work them one at a time. So this time I'm not going to lay them on top because when I pick this up, the whole thing is going to get picked up. It does get a little more awkward as you join the rows because you've got more of this and they're not held in place yet this way. So they will kind of twist and everything, but they are secure. Don't let that bother you. And we're just going to join one at a time and I'm going to leave them on the desk so I can pick them up as I need them. So the first one I will pick up, put right sides together. We want to get a slip knot on our hook to start with. Again, same way that we've been doing it. Looping around, pull it down like a pretzel. And there we are. So this brown one, see, they, they, they get out of their position. Put them back into their position. We're going to pick up this first corner. Now remember, it's joined to everything else. So don't get too rough with it. Same place, we go into the chain space. And remember, this is the wrong side facing me. We go into this chain space right here and the one at the back to the left of the double crochet. Pull through a slip stitch. Chain one. Into the next chain space, slip stitch, chain one. Continue to the next and we'll go to the corner here and I'll show you how I get the next one in and then I'll let you finish this whole piece off. Chain one. Always remember those chain ones. Slip stitch. Keep a nice loose hand. Coming up to the corner. Chain one and into the corner, which is just the chain space to the right of the double crochet. And slip stitch and chain one. Now we have another one joined. So now we're creating this strip, but we're also joining it to the rows. The next one will be joined to this and I have it right here, ready to go, flipping it right sides together and picking it up to start it. So it's important to have everything lined up so you know what square you want next. So we go into the first chain space to the left of the double crochet on the new squares and do a slip stitch. Chain one. And away we go on to the next square. Keep working this way till you get to the next corner. And then into the corner, which is to the right, the chain space to the right of the double crochet and chain one. Now we have two of them joined. And when we flip them up, we're getting there. See how the strips are coming together? So keep working like that. You've got these two squares to join across here. And then we have one more row sitting out of camera here that has to go on to the next row and you do it just the way we did this one. And I'll meet you back here when we have all four rows joined this way and I'll start to show you how to join them this way. Now we have all of our squares joined across. Now we want to join them lengthwise. So your whole piece is joined together now, but it's floppy because your strips aren't joined 
on the vertical. We're going to start on the right hand side and flip this first strip over top of the second strip with right sides together. Rotate your work and we're going to do the exact same thing as we were doing before all the way across these four squares and I'll show you what we do when we hit this spot right here. Same as before you want to slip knot on your hook. So get that on there. And that's how we begin. We pick up our first batch of squares that we're going to be working across. And we're going again into the chain space beside the double crochet to the left of it and working a slip stitch. And then chain one. So exactly what we were doing before. Into the next chain space, work them together, slip stitch, and chain one. Now keep working this way until we hit that join. And I'll show you how to get across that to the next square. So you've got a lot of fabric here that you're working with and kind of tossing around, but it's all joined together. You just have to make sure you don't twist it when you join it. So I just went through the chain space to the right of the double crochet, did my slip stitch. Now I do a chain one, but I'm going to incorporate this strand right here into it. This is the chain stitch that we worked in between joining our squares on the horizontal seam. We want to incorporate this into the vertical seam to add more security and it looks better from the right side. So I go underneath the chain stitch in between the squares, yarn over and pull that through and through the loop on the hook. That's my chain stitch and I incorporate it into this seam as well. And then I do one more chain stitch. So there's actually two chain stitches going on here. Then I work into the chain space to the left of the double crochet and we're off and running again. So let's just take a closer look at what we just did there. So the way that we made it across here was the chain stitch after our last slip stitch went underneath this piece right here, pulled it through so it incorporated it, and then we did a chain stitch over top of it. So let's work to the next one and do the same thing. So we did our slip stitch in the first corner of this square, chain one and we'll work our way across until we get to the next corner the same way that we did for all the other squares only working in the chain spaces and working slip stitches So I just worked a slip stitch into this chain space right at the corner. Now we're going to go under the chain stitch of the crossways seam, wrap the yarn around and pull it through and pull it through the one on the hook. So that's a chain stitch that incorporates this right here. And then we do another chain stitch and we're off and running for the next square. We'll keep working to the next corner. And then we're in our next corner and before we do the chain stitch we go underneath this cross piece right here, yarn over, pull through, and then another chain one. And back into the next square so we go to the chain space beside the double crochet to the left of it. Every chain space gets worked into whether it's on the horizontal or on the vertical.
and we've come to our last corner. We do a slip stitch, pull the yarn through, and then we're going to cut it. Pull it all the way through and you've finished that one. So that was the first row that we did in the opposite direction. And now you can see it's all come together. Nice little joins here. And then on the back, see how it's all nicely attached. It actually is kind of pretty, but you won't see this side because it'll be on the inside of your pillow cover. So now all you have left to do is the same thing we did here. You do across this one and across this one and your whole piece will be joined. Now with all the vertical seams finished, we have a complete pillow top. You can make a second one to cover the back of the pillow. Once I have a front and back ready to go, I sew my pieces together using a simple whip stitch from the right side. This is just one way to do it, but it's my preferred way. Your happy petal pillow is all set to brighten up your home or make a heartfelt gift for someone special. With how simple and fun these are to create, try playing with even more color combinations. Remember to check out my blog for more free patterns and project inspiration. And while you're there, check out my shop where you can find the PDF pattern versions of the squares and projects for sweaters, blankets, and home decor using many of my squares. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel so you're sure to catch all my tutorials as they come out. Thanks for crocheting with me today and I'll see you in the next tutorial.